Hey everyone, you guys all doing well? That is good, good to hear. All right, uh, today I'm speaking uh, a message that's, you know, what I've been sensing and feeling from God. Hopefully it's something fresh for you guys. I've been thinking, um, you know, I want to bring something that, you know, um, that hopefully can affect us as a church and maybe it'll affect individuals. You know, maybe it's for someone, I hope for more than one person. But, you know, like if it's one, like, you know, it's, if it's life-changing for one person, that's, that matters. You know, that counts. Uh, so the, the, the one I'm speaking about, about the, the thing that I'm hearing from God, what I'm, when I'm talking, and, and is a real sense of thankfulness. You know, a real sense of, 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 of thankfulness. And I'll, I'll tell you what, this scripture here in Colossians 3.15 is the, is the big one um, that I want to share with you today. Noah, you got that there? It's up there. Okay, it says, let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts. Let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts. Not let a peace of Christ rule in your hearts. And that's still okay, I think. That still technically works. But let the peace of Christ rule. Rule in your hearts, since as members of one body, you were called to peace. You know, I just think that's a very powerful scripture. And I would love to say that, oh, this is, I've been living in this scripture, I've been living out of this scripture. But the reality is, I want this, I want this scripture, I need this scripture like a tattoo to the inside of my eyelids. So, but that probably wouldn't work. I don't think you could, because there's no lights in there. Um, <laughs> But, you know, like, sometimes when I come and bring a scripture, I bring a scripture that's really, you know, like, I, you know, I'm saying, this is in me, I've, it's become part, this is, I want this scripture to be part of me. It's not, I'll be honest with you, it's not a hundred, I'm not there yet, but I really want it to be, you know, I really want this scripture to be, you know, me to be able to move in it and, and move out of it. But if I'm going to be honest with you, 100% honest with you, I would, it's like the thing I want in my heart that's not quite there. And what I say is, like, I, I know the scripture. And I know what it's trying to say, but I am not always moving in a place of peace. Uh, and I'm just going to talk, a, you know, a little bit about that. I'll give you so, and I think we're all in the same sort of, uh, you know, situ- situation. For me, like, you know, it's COVID. Uh, I had this uh, tooth problem. I went to the dentist and there was a very uh, young lady dentist. Well, not, I shouldn't say, but no matter what gender she is, but um, she was... You know, yeah, well, she, this was a person who was fresh out of dental school and she was having a good old chat and she's like, yeah, I'm fresh out. I've moved down here because, you know, they there's dental jobs are hard to come by. So if you come somewhere remote like Tasmania, you can get a gig. And I'm like, then I, you know, now, then I'm just like, oh, this is a lovely chit chat. But now thinking back on it, I'm like, oh. Um, and then she was saying, oh, yeah, like, you know, I'm going to try a new technique I'm like, and like, she seemed like a nice lady and, you know, like, I'm like, oh, well, I want to help her out. She's come down here to practice on people. You know, this will be, this will be good. And so now this may be a common thing, but you guys tell me if this ever happened to you. So what she did is she got like a big rubber um, face thing and she put it over like here. And then have you guys, I don't know if so many of you have seen Predator. Have you guys seen the Predator? <laughs> yeah, with the face claws. You've never seen Predator? You've never seen a picture of Predator on the internet? John, he loves Predator. Great film. Great film. He's seen Predator. There's some Predators out there. And so uh, it's like these clamps, these metal clamps, and then it would grab my mouth and then pull it all open and then put a rubber thing over there, like a reverse Predator. So instead of the claws coming out of the face, they're going into my face. And she's going away there. And so the doctor I saw six months ago said I had great teeth for someone who clearly is not, you know, like hasn't been to the dentist for nine years. They have your dental records, which I find, you know. Anyway, and so she's there and she's going away. And then all of a sudden, I don't know what happens, but she seems something, there's a slip or a something or a twist or a, but all of a sudden there's a bang and all these metal pieces, one of them hits the roof. It's a boom, 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 this plastic thing shoots across the room and then she seems to have like a panic attack and she says I'm just I'm just and then she leaves the room and the dental assistant she looks nervous and then she seems to compose herself 
uh, come back in, uh, finish it without the Predator accessories. <laughs> and then she, we, you know, do the whole thing and she does all the things that she's going to do and she sits down and she goes, well, there was a little, there was a thing that happened. I was like, oh, really? Was there? <laughs> and she says, uh, you know, we might have issues with this tooth, right? And I said, okay, well, you know. And anyways, life goes on. I go back six months later to recent times. We're in the future now. We're in now times. <laughs> And I go back and that she's gone. I'm like, oh, where's that? She's like, oh, yeah, she's gone. Like, mm. And he looks at it, he's like, oh, yeah, no, this tooth is not good. <laughs> and so then I'm like, oh, you might have to have it removed. And so, like, I'm stressing out and there's this, like, abscess that gets on my a gum. And, like, you know, I'm like, oh, yeah, there's just an abscess there. That's all right. I just drain that every day. I just squeeze, like, I just poke it. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Sorry, guys. I... And I do that for some months. Um, <laughs> Because I think, you know, Jesus will make me, it'll be okay. You know, surely Christians can't have gum infections. Uh, and anyways, what happens if you get an infection, uh, like a, you know, ongoing infection, is that you can start to feel a bit down. And, and that's just what happened to me. And I started to feel, get, get sick easy, like always running down. And then also, at the same time as this abscess is, is attacking my mouth, we got COVID going on. Uh, you know, like we all could have died, um, you know. Well, that's what the news made it seem like. You know, there was no church and sports and no pubs, uh, no video game night. You know, I mean, well, there's one of those things I attended regularly, but still. <laughs> but, you know, there's, there's just nothing. Uh, and I'm not feeling great and our whole world changed. And, and all of a sudden, I'm not living in a place of peace, uh, you know, there's, it's, it's, I'm living in this place where I'm not feeling well. I have to have the whole uh, tooth, I had a whole tooth removed this week. It was horrible. They go in there and they pull it out and, and it makes a noise like uh, your ears are popping, but for like louder. That's horrible. Now there's a hole in my mouth. Um, and, and I'll be honest, the peace of Christ was not ruling my heart, like it said in the scripture. It wasn't. And I find when I'm in a stressful situation where I'm, you know, like stuff's not right, either one of two things will happen. And first, first thing that usually happens is I'll get frustrated. You know, the kids seem indefinitely louder than they did before. Like, you know, they're just so much louder and, you know, like they're just so much more intense. You know, uh, everything that uh, Penelope says to me appears to be specifically crafted to be a personal attack upon my, you know, persons. Do you know what I mean? Like everything. It just seems like even just the littlest things I have is the dishes done. Seems like an attack was like, you don't do the dishes enough. Uh, you know, it's just everything, you know, just everything, you get frustrated and grumpy. The dog is not a household family pet um, that's supposed to provide us comfort. It is an agent of the enemy that is sent here to attack us and attack everything we hold sacred. Um, you know, yeah, I got the downsides and he's, you know, he's not biting me because he wants to say hello. He's abiding me because he hates me. Um, you know, and it's just like when you're in this, and I know mostly, it's probably mostly guys that when you're not feeling, uh, if you're not, you know, living out of peace, you're getting frustrated. You're getting frustrated with the kids. You're getting frustrated with work. You're getting frustrated with the people around you. The, the people on the radio is annoying you. The people everywhere. And that's, that's, that's one way that not living in peace um, affects us. And I can pretend like, oh, it's just been a long day. And I can pretend like, oh, I just worked hard, so it's okay to be a bit. But if I'm going to be honest with myself, it's like I'm not living in peace. You know, like I think in our modern society, like when we're working and, both, you know, a lot of couples are working and like there's a lot on, there's kids and stuff. We put a lot of our, our shift, a lot of our behaviours and things onto, oh, I'm busy and there's a lot going on. So therefore, you know, it's all right to be a bit, you know, but in reality, in my heart, I know it's not. It's not, I don't, it's not me living with peace. It's not me living with Jesus. It's me using excuses for poor behaviour. You know, and the second thing that happens, now this doesn't happen to me a lot, but it does happen to people, is that you can, if you're not living in this place, you can go, and things are not going well, you can go to a place of fear and anxiety. 
This doesn't happen to me often, but if I have like a, a gum infection that could be spreading to my throat, it, it does happen. Uh, and you can live in a place of fear and anxiety, that everything's terrible, nothing's going to go back to the way it was, everything's going to, you know, COVID's going to win, and, you know, like it's, you can just live in this place of fear and anxiety that no one cares about me, no one's, da, 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 whatever it is that you, just crazy things that you think when you're in that place, you're like not reasonable things. You just start thinking in an unreasonable manner, you start thinking that every time someone says something that they actually mean that they hate you and they don't want to see you again, you know. <laughs> And, you know, when someone says goodbye, you go, okay, that, they said goodbye. It means I'm never going to see them again. <laughs> They're leaving forever. And that's sometimes, uh, it's funny, but sometimes, like in the most extreme things, you know, that's how you can, you know, you start to overthink what people say. You start to, you know, and that's because I'm not living in a place of peace. I'm not living with that revelation that, that Jesus, everything's going to be okay, that i got Jesus in my heart, that it's all going to, you know, even though there can be rocky and horrible things that we're going through, and even though things are different and things are not the same, that, that doesn't mean that God's not there for me. Um, you know, we need to be thankful because the reality is it's like, okay, now I have identified that I'm not living in a good place because I'm frustrated a lot or that I'm anxious and stuff. There's some things that you can do. Now, you know, like, you know, sometimes, you know, the worldly sort of advice is, you know, make sit still, breathe slower, um, you know, go home, you know, stand in a meadow of, of corn in, and brush your hands across the wheat, um, you know, put some of that um, stinky stuff in one of those steamers, you know, those, uh, like, a, like a humidifier for kids, but put smelly stuff in there. Yeah, yeah, put some of that in there. You know, uh, wear a lot of white linen. <laughs> These are all things that we can do, but they don't work for me. Um, <laughs> I, I'll be honest, I haven't tried many of those things, so I won't. I'll get some linen and I'll let you know how it goes. Yeah. Um, but that doesn't always work for me. Like, it's a little bit helpful, but I find the key to just like, okay, like, if you're not in a place, if you're anxious, and you're fearful, or you're frustrated, and you're angry, and I just say to you, hey, man, let the peace of of Jesus, you know, peace. That's not enough. (laughs) You know, like, that's not enough to just, like, okay, I know now that I'm frustrated, or I'm anxious, I now, now, I need peace. All right, I'll go get some. (laughs) Peace. Just find it. It's not enough. So I found the key to having peace is being thankful, you know, and how you do that is, is reflect on the things that is going well and ask God, it's like, what do you know, how can I be thank- thankful? The second scripture I'm sharing with you guys today is from Psalms 100. It's a good one. It's, it happens to be 100, but also a good one. Um, it says here, in, only in verse 4, it says, Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and praise his name. You know... Sometimes uh, we just need to start being thankful for what we do have and be, thankf- be understanding how lucky we are and be thankful for the family that we do have and for the jobs we have and for the friends we have and for the, for the church we have. And these are the is that four things that I'm just going to quickly go through today. Um, all right, so the first thing there, what I said was uh, f- family, you know. Like if you're living, and now again, these are things that I've, you know, these are not necessarily my personal sentiments. Uh, but, like, if you're unthankful about your, you know, your family, you might think, oh, this bloke's wife does this and that and can do these things and cleans this up and has the kids like this. You know, if you start thinking, it, you know, along this, you know, train of thought, it's like, oh, my, this person's kids are all toilet trained through the nights and they don't attack you. They don't, when you come home, punch you in the, in the nether regions. And you start looking at other people's families and go, oh, you know, they do this and they do that and they, and they seem to have it all together, yeah. you know. They can, 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 can do this and they can do that and they seem to turn up to things and they're on time and all oh, the kids are, have haircuts and are dressed <laughs> appropriately and, you know, my kids can't turn up and their hairs are everywhere and, you know, they're wearing Star Wars shirts and stuff and it's okay unless it's a funeral. 
Um, you know, and we're, so we're living in this unthankful, looking at the grass is greener sort of thing. Why can't my wife be more like this? Or why does she have to say this? Or, you know, why, you know like, I can't just, you know, but that's all living in a place of that unthankfulness, that fear, you know, that sort of stuff. The thankful way of looking at it is just think, hey, I have, for one, I have a family, you know. My kids are wonderful, kind human beings. All three of my little boys, they're just sweet people, you know. Yeah, look, maybe they're not going to be, um, you know, the, if, if you look at their school results, maybe they're not going to be astrophysical scientists, you know, and maybe if you come and watch their soccer games, there's a lot more skipping than there is running, <laughs> So maybe they're not going to be world-famous athletes. But, you know, you could turn around. <laughs> There's still time. But, you know, anything can happen. But if you're looking, if you're just, like, you know, trying to look, it's like, no, okay. But that's, they are who they are, you know. And they are wonderful, caring, you know, kids. And they might not ever get, you know, super top marks or whatever it is. But they are wonderful and caring and they love each other, and they love other people. And that is something that, you know, is hard to, to achieve. And, you know, my, my wife is amazing, and she helps, you know, she fosters our kids so well, and she's a great mother, and she helps other kids in her job. Uh, and how lucky I am to have someone. There's so many lonely people out there, you know, and so many people who haven't found someone, and so many people who, you know, are in a horrible relationship. And I just happen to be in this amazing thing where I found that person that we share life together and it's, there's no question of where I'm going to be next week. It's like, you know, there's other people out there, you know, sadly, and if you go out in the world and you meet, it's just like this week I'm at home with the kids, but next week I'm at my brother's house because things aren't going well. Um, you know, that's how it goes. Like, you know, how lucky that we can be in a place with stable relationships and, you know, I know it can be tough. I'm not trying to say it can't be tough, but you know, like, stop, we need to stop looking at things that could be, you know, a little bit better or that could be done this way. The second thing is, is about work, and this is a big one. We th- often stress about work, and I talk to people when they're stressing about work, about how, oh, if I could, if I had done this course, I could be doing this, or if, you know, if I was, if I was lived in this, if I lived in Melbourne, I'd be earning this many dollars, and if I, you know, if I did this, or if I had this guy's job, that I could do this better, and I could have this, and you know, or we spend so much time just trying to get ahead in our work life. You know, we're just trying to, and it becomes we put pressure on ourselves, and we we want to do the best we can, and we come home just mentally drained from trying to do everything right, in the hopes, that, you know, like. Hey, we just got to, you just got to chill, you know, like you've got to understand that God's got a, a plan for you. I've got a house. I have a car. I have clothes to wear. I have food for my kids. You should that, that should count for something, you know, like that should count for something, you know, like, yeah, someone might have a nicer car or a nicer house or this or that, but I have everything that I need in my world. And that's, you know, sometimes we just send a lot of energy trying to get to that next level and reality is it's not important. It's not worth getting wound up so that when you come home to your family that, you know, you're exhausted. you got no peace. No peace. No thankfulness. Uh, and friends, like, you know, sometimes we watch, we go, oh, why don't, you know, I wish this couple would invite us around more. I wish we were just in the cool group or, you know, oh, I wish that we, you know, my friends, oh, we don't do, you know, like we're always doing I don't know what we're always doing board games and stuff, but I want to be doing bungee jumping. And I see on Instagram these other group of friends are all, they're salsa dancing and they're in Rome and they're doing. And you go, oh, my friends, we're just you know we're just um, you know having barbecues and playing some board games. And sometimes we used to go to the movies once upon a time, <laughs> you know. Or you know this person's doing this or this person's doing that. And sometimes we just had to be thankful for the, the people who are are in our world. You know, we've got to be thankful for the times we do get to, to spend t- together because the reality is we have an amazing church family uh, with people who care and love us. You know, we have... And I know that we don't all have the time. It's a busy... It is busy. You know, and I know for me who's with kids and stuff, you don't get to see people like you did when you are a teenager and, you know, just, you know, just hang out all day and all night. It's different now. We've got responsibilities and stuff, but still understanding that there's people who, the people who care for you, even though we don't have the time that we did when we were younger to spend all, stay up all night 
playing video games and, and running to McDonald's at 3 o'clock in the morning, that doesn't mean the relationships we have aren't strong. Just because we don't see eye to eye on every topic and stuff, that doesn't mean that we do not care for each other. So we do need to be thankful. And then also that realisation was, was like, oh, well, I wish that these people would see us, this, this would happen, this would happen, this would happen. It's like, okay, well, what are you doing? Who have you invited around? Who have I, you know, what relationship can I make stronger? You know, like, you know, how can I be more of a friend to someone? Last one. We're getting to the end there. Because <laughs> I'm happy because I didn't know I'd get to the end before the time ran out. I'm going to hit all the points. But I did. The fourth one, if you remember, I said the, th- the things that, you know, it was a family and job and friends and church. You know, sometimes we get into, uh, a pl- I wish our church did this. I wish, you see other churches doing this. Oh, their online service is doing this or they're doing this program. They've got this ministry. We should be doing this. We should be doing that. Um, you know, the pastors should never say this and never say that. And, you know, all this sort of you know, stuff. Uh, and, it, you know, like, hey, some of it might be true. We should, maybe could be doing this, that or the other. But in our hearts, we've still just got to be thankful for the amazing house we have. Amen. This house is full of spirit-filled people who love God, who love each other. Uh, we have an amazing building, amazing services, amazing music. We have an amazing youth ministry that's doing amazing things. We have pastors who really want God to move in this town, you know, who really want to see, you know, things happen. In this town, and that's something to be thankful for. And you know, having a good heart about you know, instead of making it a stress, being having you know, it's like be thankful for what we do have. You know, the connect group that we we do have, or the you know, the, the things we do have. Just be thankful for it and, and enjoy what we we do have. Um, you know, instead of always looking for you know how things could be better and stuff, and just enjoying our Christian walk and and life. You know, it's very, very important to enjoy that the things that we're doing and make sure that we're getting a heart full, you know, when we do the things that we do instead of just, you know, brute forcing it all the time. So the key to peace, and it's like I said, that first scripture said, let peace, let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts. You know, that's a hard thing to do. And I think if we just objectively look at our hearts, you can say, is peace ruling in my heart? You know, and for some of you it might be because you're wiser and older and smarter and all that sort of stuff. But you might just need to look at your heart. It's like in all those areas at work, am I really working at peace or am I anxious about what the boss is going to say and make sure I say the right thing in front of this person because, you know, that they're the ship's shift supervisor and I might make sure that this person thinks I'm doing the best I can and, you know, make sure no one, you know, this, am I at peace in my family, you know? Am I, when I enter the home, am I making it a peaceful, a better place? Or am I just adding to the stress and chaos? You know, you know and, and, you know, in all those different things, you know, when I'm meeting with someone or I'm chatting to them after the service, am I bringing peace to the, the situation? In, in, to, or am I just adding to the, oh, you know, what's going on in the world? You know, you need to have peace in your heart. I'm just going to quickly pray as the music team uh, comes back. You just want to bow your heads. Heavenly Father, I just speak right now a peace over everyone's hearts. If, if you're, for the older people here, there's stresses for the, you know, the, of, of working and you know, all the stuff that's going on. For if they're young people, the stresses of school, of boyfriends and girlfriends, for you know, all the things that are going on in their world, for the parents, the stresses of parenting. You know, Heavenly Father, I just pray a peace over all these things, Lord. Absolute peace, Lord. And right now, I just pray that, God, you're dropping things for us to be thankful about in our hearts. You know, the different things, just right now, things are popping into our minds of things that are going well, things that we do have, you know, things that, you know, that we never thought that we would ever have, things that it's just we realise or we take for granted for. I pray right now, God, you're just dropping those things into our minds right now how lucky we really are. Heavenly Father, God. And I just pray that you help us walk in peace. You know, and no one has to walk around frustrated, upsetting the people around us. And no one has to walk around full of 
anxiety and fear and worry. Heavenly Father, peace, Lord. Amen.